Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a fantasy horror film, Dracula Untold. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in the year 1442. A Turkish sultan enslaves a thousand Transylvanian boys to fill the ranks of his army. These child slaves were trained to kill without conscience and to crave the blood of all who defied the Turks. One of these child slaves would grow to be feared by entire armies at the mention of his name, Vlad, the Impaler. He is also the Prince of Transylvania. Eventually, he returns home to Transylvania to rule in peace and bury his violent past. Years later, Vlad is with a retinue of his men along a stream of water. A man comes forward and brings their attention to a helmet found along the stream. Vlad reveals that the helmet belongs to a Turkish scout, who quite possibly might be traveling with more scouts. This means that the Turkish forces might be starting another invasion again. He analyzes the surroundings and arrives at the conclusion that the helmet has washed downstream from the Broken Tooth Mountain. He orders his trusted soldier, Dumitru, to go back to the castle and alert the guards and double the sentries, but Dumitru refuses and tells him he will not leave his side. Vlad reassures him that he will try to negotiate for peace and then leaves with two other soldiers. Later inside the mountain, Vlad and the two soldiers look for clues about the scout's whereabouts. One of the soldiers finds an entrance to a cave, but is quickly scared off by a group of bats, who fly off from the entrance. Vlad tells the soldiers that the scouts are inside, because bats don't move during the day unless something disturbs them. They head inside the entrance with their swords drawn. One of the soldiers lights a torch and leads the way inside the cave. Vlad notices that the floor is filled with crushed bones and tells them the Turks did not do this. Suddenly a figure from the dark grabs one of the soldiers and drags them into the darkness. Vlad tells the remaining soldier that they need to leave, but the soldier is also caught by the figure and killed. Vlad manages to head towards the entrance, where the sunlight shines brightly. He raises his sword and manages to slice the monster, but it doesn't chase him into the sunlight. He gets a good look at the monster's face and sees its fangs and glowing eyes. He notices that the blood on his blade quickly evaporates in the sunlight. Vlad rides back immediately to his castle. Inside, he meets with a monk, who tells him that four nights ago, everyone in his order awoke, with the same dream of a creature laying siege to the castle. He reveals to Vlad that the monster he encountered used to be a man, who bargained with a demon for power. But in return, he turned into a vampire, and was condemned to live in darkness for eternity, until he found someone to set it free. Vlad tells the monk that the people already live in fear of the return of the Turks, and makes the monk promise to keep his knowledge a secret. Within one of the rooms in the castle, Vlad's son and his wife are horsing around when Vlad enters. His son runs up to him and embraces him and Sobas his wife. His wife notices that something is troubling Vlad and asks him what's wrong. Vlad deflects the question and remarks on her beauty instead. In the master bedroom, Vlad's wife asks him if a wolf attacked him today. He tells her that it's similar to a wolf and all he knows is that he lost two good men today. He slips into the bath and his wife asks him again what troubles him. He reveals that his son is at the same age, where he was forced into servitude to the Turks, and if he were to die now before another of his son's birthdays, it would be too soon since the son is still so young. His wife comforts him and tells him he is home now. The next day during the Easter celebration, Dumitru toasts Vlad's good health and his return as the Prince of Transylvania. The people enjoy the music and delicious food until a group of Turkish soldiers, led by one of the Sultan's generals, interrupts the party. Vlad greets the general and tells him that he has the Sultan's tribute ready. The general reveals that he knows about the missing scouts from the Turkish army and blames Vlad for their deaths. He tells the general to take the tribute and leave. Before the general leaves, he tells Vlad that the Sultan also demands a thousand boys to become soldiers in their army. The people around the hall protest, but one of the Turkish men threatens one of the boys in the hall, which angers Vlad. He pushes the man up against the hall and warns him not to do that again. The general signals his men to leave. In the evening, Vlad talks to his son about his past and how his father gave him up to the Turks to prove his loyalty to the Sultan. In the morning, Vlad rides to the Turkish camp along with a retinue of his men on horseback. The Turkish soldiers spit on the ground as Vlad walks through the camp. He enters the tent of the Sultan, who warmly welcomes him. The two of them sit down and talk about their past. The Sultan recalls how Vlad struggled to fit in, but soon started to be like the Turks. He asks Vlad where the 1,000 boys he requested are. Vlad tells him he could grant any other request, but not that. The Sultan tells him he will be given 1,000 boys, and Vlad's son will be raised under his roof. He begs the Sultan not to do it, but the Sultan tells him what one boy is, if he could make another. Vlad meets his family along the road, and with him is a group of Turkish cavalry riders. His wife begs him not to go through with sending their son to live with the Sultan, but Dumitru pulls her back. 
Vlad's son reassures him that he can do it and says goodbye to his father. But at the last second, Vlad's love for his son overwhelms his duty. He whispers to his son to run to his mother, and Vlad pulls out his sword to attack the cavalrymen. He successfully kills all the cavalrymen and tells his family to head back to the castle. Vlad knows all too well that his defiance of the Sultan will only result in bloodshed for his country. He then heads to Broken Tooth Mountain in search of a way to beat the Turks. Inside the cave, Vlad seeks to find the vampire. The vampire appears in front of Vlad and tells him to hide his silver ring away. He asks the vampire for help to save his kingdom and his people. The vampire questions him if he feels anything about the people he killed in the past. Vlad tells him that he does, but the vampire pushes him up against the wall and tells him not to lie. Vlad admits that he does not feel anything for the people he has murdered. The vampire offers him his blood and tells him that the key to saving his kingdom lies in the blood, but he must resist the urge to feed on another human being for three days, or else he will turn into a vampire forever. With his determination, Vlad drinks the blood and dies. Vlad wakes up along the stream and finds that the silver ring in his hand is hurting him. He takes off the ring and discovers that he can heal his wound quickly. He could also hear and see things from far away. He wears his silver ring around his neck and turns into a swarm of bats to head back to the castle immediately. Vlad returns to find the castle under siege. He inspires hope in the refugees inside the castle and tells them that they will not be defeated. He exits the castle gates and prepares to fight the entire Turkish army alone. He pushes through their ranks with ease and single-handedly fends off all of the invading Turks, beating them like pieces of shit. After the battle is over, Vlad stands over the field of dead bodies victorious. The Transylvanian soldiers storm out of the castle gates, shocked to see that there are no enemies to fight. Vlad tells them not to question what happened tonight and orders everybody to leave for a nearby monastery. Word has spread to the Turkish military camp that Vlad has defeated their army. The Sultan tells his officers that he will send a hundred thousand men next and will personally lead the army. Meanwhile, Vlad looks at the Turkish camp on top of the mountains, promising his men that he will win the war in three days. That evening, Vlad finds himself struggling to control his urge to feed. He exits the tent before he puts his wife in danger. He stands alone in the middle forest, where he meets a mysterious man who offers him his blood. But Vlad refuses and threatens the man, telling him to stay away. The next day, the Sultan and his army arrive on the field, where they see a single remaining soldier. The soldier tells them that Vlad hopes they enjoy the view. There, they look behind to see hundreds of soldiers impaled in stakes. Vlad's wife wakes up to find Vlad shaking during his sleep. She checks on him and discovers that the silver ring is burning his body. She takes away the silver, which awakens him. He reveals to his wife that he is a vampire and rips away the cloth to let the sunlight in to show her what he has become. He tells her that he has to resist feeding on human blood for two more days, or else he will become a vampire forever. Moments later, Dumitru prepares to depart with the rest of the people, but Vlad's wife tells him that he will be the temporary commander, while Vlad is doing his reconnaissance mission on the Turks. He asks where Vlad is, but she says that Vlad has already gone. Dumitru then orders everyone to move out. Night falls, and the Turks launch a surprise attack on the Transylvanians. Vlad rushes to the battlefield, while Dumitru ensures the safety of Vlad's wife and son. A Turkish commander stabs him and tries to attack the wife and son, but Vlad saves them in time and throws the commander down the cliff. Vlad tries to help Dumitru, but he succumbs to his wound. In the morning, they enter the monastery and warn the monks of an incoming Turkish attack. Vlad heads to the armory along with other soldiers to prepare for the battle. His son notices a black door in the armory and asks him what is inside. Vlad tells him that he hopes not to use what's inside ever again. In the Turkish camp, rumors began to spread about Vlad and his use of dark magic, but the Sultan tells one of his generals that all they need to do is blindfold their men so that they would not fear Vlad. The Sultan rallies his men, who are trained to march and fight blindfolded, and they begin the journey to lay siege to the monastery. Back in the monastery, a monk discovers that Vlad has become a vampire. He slashes open the tent fabric, letting in sunlight, which burns Vlad's face immediately. People gather around the commotion and see that Vlad has truly become a vampire. They throw torches at the tent and burn Vlad in fear. His wife orders one of the servants to bring their son inside and lock his room. Vlad leaves the fire with his body scorched. He shouts at his people for their lack of loyalty, but his wife calms him down. In the evening, Vlad prays in the altar room and talks to his son. He tells him that he will be a great leader one day. His son thanks him for what he has done to save him from the Turks. The Turkish army arrives at the monastery and begins to climb up the cliffside. Vlad climbs on top of the tower and summons a giant swarm of bats to devastate the Turkish army. He notices the Sultan on the battlefield and rushes straight for him. 
but he realizes that it is not the Sultan when he removes the helmet. It turns out the Turks fooled him and sent off a decoy army, while the real army is heading inside the monastery. Inside the monastery, a group of Turkish soldiers manages to sneak through and try to attack Vlad's family. A soldier dies protecting them as they escape the room. The wife and son arrive on top of the tower, thinking that Vlad is there, but he isn't. A Turkish soldier follows them to the top and kicks the wife off the edge, but she manages to hang on. Vlad hears the screams of his wife and abandons the battlefield to save her. Vlad pushes off the Turkish soldier, but his wife loses her grip and falls off the edge. Vlad tries to catch her, but it's too late and she dies. The Sultan takes away his son and rides off with his army. As she lay dying, the wife begs Vlad to drink her blood so his curse would be lifted and he would have the power to get their son back from the Sultan. Left with no choice, Vlad chooses to do so. Vlad opens the room in the armory and dons the armor inside. He holds a funeral for his wife and promises to get vengeance. Later in the Turkish camp, Vlad turns the survivors into vampires who accept the gift of his blood. The vampires soon wreak havoc on the Turkish army, who are easily overpowered. Vlad enters the tent of the Sultan with his son inside. The Sultan draws a silver blade against him. The silver coins scattered around the room weaken Vlad, enabling the Sultan to have the upper hand in the fight. The Sultan knocks him down and prepares to impale him with a stake, but he manages to overpower the Sultan and kill him with the stake. Vlad leaves the tent with his son, but the vampires stop them and want to kill his son. Vlad kills one of the vampires and tells the monk to take his son away and keep him safe. Then the sun shines again and kills all the vampires, including Vlad. It's later revealed that the Turks never fully conquered Europe and Vlad's son becomes the new king of Transylvania. The mysterious man from earlier revives the scorched body of Vlad by giving him his blood. The movie ends with Vlad living as an immortal until the modern age. In the bustling city, he meets the reincarnation of his wife and is ready to restore their harmony. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.